Hey everyone, Mano back here for a quick This Week in Destiny where we break down everything that is going on at the weekly reset. First things first, if you have the Season of the Splicer Season Pass and you've gone through everything that you need to do for the story, you're going to get a notification to go to the helm and talk to the Servitor Splicer. He is going to give you a ship and an Ascendant Shard once you pick up that ship. I'm going to leave a video of that plus the final piece that you do here at the wreath or the special tribute that they have. Uh, so if you don't want to get spoiled, you don't have to get spoiled. So you can check that out later. Next up for our Vanguard stuff, we've got all six of the Grand Master Nightfalls. Again, you can go to the node and select which one you want. For our Vanguard Strikes, we've got Void Singe and Stasis Singe. For our normal Nightfall, we have the Fallen Saber Strike. So if you need to get that taken care of, you can go get that all knocked out. The Grandmaster Nightfall weapon and the Nightfall weapon is the Azumi Sniper Rifle. Again, you will get the Adept version if you do it on Grandmaster and the Normal version if you do it on the Normal Nightfall piece. For the Crucible, we've got Clash as well as our Normal offerings as well. For anyone who's got Beyond Light and is looking to find out what the Eclipsed Zone is, it is the Even Tide Ruins. For the Simulation and the Exo Challenge, we've got the Simulation Survival. So you go take that out if you want to get that pinnacle. If you are not up to light level for the Ascendant Challenge this week, it's going to be over in the Bay of Drowned Wishes with the Argonach Abyss, which is a very easy one. Basically, you're, you're going to go load in here to the Devillian Mists. Make sure you pick up the actual bounty from Petrovench, and then head on back down to the Bay of Drowned Wishes. Next up, we've got Lost Sectors for today. Really quickly, the Lost Sector on the Moon is the 1310 today. That's the K1 Logistics Lost Sector. If you do it solo, you have a chance to get Exotic Leg Armor, as well as if you head over to the Tangled Shore, you can find the Empty Tank Master Lost Sector. That is going to be the higher difficulty at 1340 power level. If you do that solo, you get some Exotic Head Armor. I would really recommend if you want to farm, make sure you do the lower light activity as you can farm those usually a little bit faster so that you can get those knocked out quickly. For the raid challenge for this week, we've got the Ensembles Refrain, which is the Atheon boss challenge. Each player can only destroy one Oracle per cycle when they get teleported either into the Mars or the Venus portal. If you get that taken care of, you will get the corrective measure time lost version if you do it on the master difficulty. I don't usually cover what Banshee 44 is selling, but there are some really good rolls this week. We've got the Nightwatch Scout Rifle with snapshot sights and explosive payload, which is a really nice option because next season we will be seeing a small buff to scout rifles. In addition, explosive payload is really strong at things like Grandmaster Nightfall. So if you don't have a Nightwatch, it's really, really solid. This is definitely one you want to pick up. In addition, the 7 Seraph CQC-12 has a really nice roll with Warpal Weapon, Auto-Loading Holster, Accurized Rounds, Rifled Barrel, which is really, really solid because it increases the range. It decreases handling speed, but it has a handling masterwork, which will compensate for it. So this is definitely a roll you want to pick up this week. The other rolls are okay. If you don't have a good Falling Guillotine, now is a good time to pick this one up. It's not a god roll, but it is still very strong. It's got some good perks on it that would make it really nice. Of course, having Whirlwind Blade on there and Tireless Blade is going to be really good. And then you will have the option to pick up the Quick Fang Sword on your Hunter. In addition, on the Warlock and the Titan, respectively, you'll be able to pick up their Class Sword. So on the Warlock, Eternity's Edge. But I would definitely come and make sure that you pick up this roll of the Crown Splitter. It is going to be very, very strong. It has Whirlwind Blade, Tireless Blade, and Jagged Edge, which makes this near a god roll. No matter what, you'll always get heavy guard with this, even though Crown Splitter won't be as strong because they are removing Energy Accelerant because the artifact is going away. This is still something you want to have in your inventory. All right, next up, we have the stuff at the Eververse. Again, I'm going to only go over stuff that is offered for Bright Dust only. We have the Let Me Investigate emote. We have the That's the One emote. We have the Atheon Ghost Projection. Looking for anything in we have the Aposematism Shader. Next up, we've got the Splish Splash Exotic Emote. The Orb Weaver Shell. The Lone Howl Sparrow. 
Then we have exotics for all the different characters. If you are running a hunter, this is for your stompies. This is the Astro Sides Hunter Ornament. After that, for the Titans, we have the Execute Revival Ornament for the Phoenix Cradle. And for Warlocks, the Sovereign Signal Ornament for the Crown of Tempests. Next up, we have the Here I Am Emote. Followed by an excellent emote for those folks who are running Xenophage. This is the Homesteader Weapon Ornament. And finally, our Infinity Door Projection. All right, everybody, that is everything this week in Destiny. We have some big news coming up. I'm going to have a video previewing everything that is coming up in Season 15 that we know, as well as we'll be doing a live stream on August 24th here on YouTube, so that if you want to check out what's going on with Witch Queen, you can come and say hello over there. As always, thank you so much for watching. Good hunting, Guardians. I will see you next time in the universe of Destiny.